Hey there, my name is Megan and I am a content marketing specialist and freelance copywriter. And I'm here to talk with you today about how a blog can build trust in your business and why you should even care about building trust. Well, let me tell you, today's consumers, as you might relate as a consumer, have seen it all, you know? We need more than your guarantee as a company to pull out our wallet and make that purchase. And that's because audiences and consumers today don't trust you, at least not right away. As consumers, we have major trust issues today, okay? According to the Edelman Trust Barometer, which measures trust for the past 14 or 15 years or so, distrust in business, government, even NGOs, and especially the media are at an all time high in the year 2020 today. This shouldn't surprise too many people, um, but on average, today's consumers don't trust the media to deliver accurate information. We've lost a lot of faith in our government to do its job, and we don't believe NGOs are competent enough to really step up to the plate. And when it comes to companies in your business, we've stopped taking consumers, you know, we've stopped taking companies at their word for what they can offer us. So unless you're living under a rock, <laughs> this might not be, like I said, too much of a surprise given the state of affairs today. So what does this mean? You know, as a business, this means that it's necessary for you to focus your marketing on building trust and credibility with your audience. You know, I've said this before um, in another video and, I've, and I'll continue to say this, you know, we no longer live in a day where you can just list out the details and the benefits of your product or service through an advertisement and watch sales grow. You know, today's consumers are far more likely to trust and want to learn about your brand through content rather than a traditional ad. So take this ad from Joe Sugarman put out for blue blocker sunglasses in 1987 as an example. Okay. I'm not showing you the full ad. There's a whole lot of text on here, but this ad generated the sale of over 20 million pairs of sunglasses. Since you can't read the text and I can't even include all of it, really the advertisement touts the unbelievable effects of these sunglasses. You know, you throughout the article, he's saying, I couldn't believe my eyes and then things like that. You know, please give me the opportunity to prove it, really giving that guarantee through an ad um, to the reader that they really do work. Um, and you know, what I can guarantee today in 2020, if, if someone put out a similar in-kind ad, um, today's savvy consumer would look right at that call toll-free number and turn <laughs> to the, the page without blinking an eye. You know, we, we do this all the time in magazines, newspapers, all the time. We've just become so accustomed to seeing ads and that while ads certainly play a huge role in getting your name, your brand, um, recognition for the services that you offer out there, it cannot be your only method for having a customer understand who your brand is and what you stand for. So it's no lie or it's no secret um, that the advertising secrets of the 1980s, the 70s don't all work in today's day and age. And a huge reason for that is because back in the 70s and the 80s, the average American was exposed to around 500 ads in a day. Obviously, we don't know for sure kind of that given number, but on average, that's around how many ads someone would see back then. But today, you know, compared to today, we see around probably even more than this, around 4,000 to 10,000 ads in a given day. And so to put it simply, today's consumers, you know, we've seen it all and we need to know what you're offering beyond the, oh, I couldn't believe my eyes sales pitch. Um, we kind of, we have to trust you. And so the world of marketing and advertising has changed a lot and your business really needs to keep a pulse on those changes to stay alive. With the lack of trust we are experiencing in 2020 and beyond, you know, in order to survive as a business today, you need to provide accurate, engaging, and relevant information that answers your customers' questions and establishes trust and credibility in your offer. And one of the easiest and most effective ways to do that, because there's a lot of ways to build trust, but one of the easiest ways and something that you could implement today or build upon is your blog. It's a blog. 
you know, why, why blogs, you know, why is a blog a great way to build trust in your business? You know, we like to talk a lot about blogs in the world of marketing as an SEO generating Google loving mechanism for your business and hundred percent true, you know, check out my other content on how exactly you can get SEO content and really boost your ratings on search engines through blogs. That's a whole nother topic. Um, but that's not really what I'm focusing on today and, and with this video, what I'm focusing on and the big reason why blogs are necessary for your business in the context of this, this video is that they make your business sound real and human owned. Uh, reminding people that this business was started for a reason and giving them that reason, giving them your why, you know, you're no longer a distrustful corporation in my eyes. Once I've been able to get to know you a little bit through your blog posts and through the content that you're putting out that feels genuine and authentic. Um, so that's key, you know, it has to be well-written and authentic, but once I've had a chance to get to know you a little bit better through your blog, there's a lot higher chance that I'm going to better understand your why and get to know what you stand for and not just what you sell. So a great example of a company who does this is the fitness apparel brand K Deer. Um, so they sell leggings, different workout apparel, primarily focusing kind of on that yoga community, which is a pretty stiff industry, the fitness apparel industry in general. So their blog, what I loved about it is they're not just talking about, oh, how soft, stretchy, here's all the different, here, check out our new, um, you know, line, fall line that's coming out. You know, that if you're just talking about how stretchy and awesome your leggings are, you know, join the line of about thousand other companies who are talking about how awesome their leggings are. As someone who owns a hundred plus, who never knows like fitness apparel uh, outfits out there, I know that there's a lot of different companies. But Kay Deer's founder, Christine Deer, regularly posts content, her and her team, um, such as a blog post that she posted recently, sharing personal and really real information um, that feels authentic and genuine about her journey starting the company. In the post, she talks about struggling with depression, how she found her voice through the company, um, and really sharing the journey and the reason why the company was started in the first place. And I love this blog post and I love their blog as simple as it is if you do click onto their site because it's not just in, it's not just inviting you to make a purchase it's inviting you to join her company's journey um you know some of the comments if you read through on the post say you know this is exactly what i needed in my inbox right now and your posts and, they, and blogs provide a little light and for that i'm honored and, and grateful um, to be connected to you you know this is the point of a successful blog building community establishing trust and sharing your why, which I've mentioned before. So you don't need to have a heart wrenching story or, you know, struggling through particular areas of your life that brought you about to your business. You, know, you don't have to go down that path. Really what you need to be doing is being authentic in your storytelling and doing more in your blog than just talking about the amazing benefits of your product and service. Don't get me wrong though, you should be talking about your products and services in your blog. And you know, you should be giving that opportunity and, and that's kind of, we all know the reason why you have the blog to begin with. Um, but a blog takes it a step further than that or it should. Instead of just touting the about you and the product or service, this gives you that opportunity through a blog, through multiple, you know, posts that you're putting out frequently to share your story, answer questions, get live feedback from your readers and do more than just kind of advertise your, your product or service. So here are some necessary elements of a successful trust building blog. So I've talked about the lack of trust today that we are seeing, why blogs can help be one element of your plan in terms of building trust with your audience. But what exactly makes a blog trustworthy? You know, what exactly do you write or include as part of a trust building blog? Well, unfortunately, um, no matter how many videos you watch or how many articles you read, there's so many different answers to this question. There really is no one recipe for success and what looks right or what works for one company is not necessarily going to work for another. Um, so I definitely want to caveat that to say, you know, what, one, what works for one company might not work for you. But that being said, I do have four techniques 
that I know if you work towards or if you implement at least these four, you are in a much better position to build a successful and trust building blog. And the first tip that I love to talk about, because this is, I see this all the time, you know, in the industry, in, in with blogs that I view and, and that I work with, long form content is the way to go. It's so tempting to just put out a 200, 300 word blog post um, because you assume, you know, with today's consumers having short attention spans, that that's all that they're going to read. And not to say that there isn't a reason or a time or a 200 or 300 word blog post is appropriate, but generally, even with today's consumers having shorter attention spans than ever, it's growing increasingly more important that your blog is longer than a thousand words and preferably even longer than that, um, some experts would say. So this is because your blog post is not meant to attract every reader to your site. Your blog, your website are meant to attract the right reader for your product or service. I'll say that again. Your blog, your website are not meant to attract every single reader that comes to your site. You're not going to be right for everyone but you have to be right for the target audience that you want to hone in on. And that's what your blog is aiming to do. And that's why people get shy away from long form content because you assume you want to keep it short because people aren't going to be interested. Well, the right reader is going to be interested and they're going to want to know and, and read relevant or relevant information. You know, they're going to want to know more and you, and it's really, really hard to do that in a 300 word blog post because you actually need to give them accurate, helpful, and well-researched information. So even with short attention span, readers today, I promise, will stick around on a blog post if you answer their questions and you give them helpful information. So that's important in and of itself, but not to mention when it comes to long form, and this is another topic altogether, that Google cares how long your blogs are and how long your content is. Google considers sites with longer blog posts far more credible and tends to rank you higher as a result. So check out some of my other content on why that is, but let's dive into tip number two um, that I recommend for building a successful trust building blog. So the first long form content way to go. Second experiment, experiment with your content and track the results. Like I said earlier, one size does not fit all when it comes to blogging, you know, what works for one company might not work for another. And that's because your ideal customer is going to be different. So according to Vengage, 40% of content marketers say original visuals, such as infographics, perform best in their articles. According to SEMrush, blogs with lists get two times more shares than other blog post features. And according to Rowell, 87% uh, of video marketers say that video has increased traffic to their website. That's a lot. And those are only three different ways to kind of think about formatting your blog. So which one might work for you? And my answer to that is you got to figure it out. And the best way to figure it out is to see how your is to try it out and see how your audience reacts. So your readers might really resonate with a graphic or an image, or maybe they want to have video content incorporated as part of the blog. Maybe they want to have kind of a, a PDF or kind of list format where they can check things off or print it off and have a list where they can see those ideas in, in kind of more list form. Or maybe they want to have a poll. Maybe they're just really interested in kind of reading, you know, different content that you have and, and just getting a bunch of different things. The more you experiment with your blog and test out content with your readers, the more likely you will find exactly the kind of content that resonates and provides value. So really as much as you can test as possible um, and, and really track those results, the better you're off you're going to be because then you can provide the right kind of content that they're really attaching to. Third tip, tell your story, but do it authentically. Kind of coming back to that point I made earlier where we're savvy, you know, consumers today are wary of the marketing strategies that we've seen of the, in the past and, and that we're seeing in, in the present. It doesn't mean that they won't work. It just means that you need to be a little, the more authentic you can be in your messaging, 
the, the better it'll, it'll come across to your consumer. So if you're a salesperson, you know, you know that you can't just walk into a sales meeting and start immediately talking about the benefits of your product. You're just, you're not, it's your, your success rate is going to be low. Every salesperson knows, you know, you have to start a meeting by introducing yourself, talking about your company, getting to know the person in front of you, taking the, the time to really understand, like, what are your biggest challenges? What are the goals that you're trying to meet right now? Um, this is what's going to be able to make you be able to, at the end of the meeting, say, I hear you say X, I offer solution Y, and this is how it's going to help you. A blog is kind of like a business meeting in that way because it gives you that space to share all of that, to share your journey, to get to know your audience a little bit better and what they care about and bucket it out into digestible pieces. That's what's great about a blog. You keep posting more content and you can, you can continue to keep adding value and sharing more of your story. Like the K-Deer example, you can use a blog to share your company's journey to getting started or you can share the challenges you see in the industry or address the up at night issues that your reader is experiencing. It, it allows you that opportunity to talk about your company's why without sounding like you're immediately about to make a sale. You know, this is because you don't have to follow up with every blog post on your why with a buy here button. You know, it's, it's not, that's really not the goal of a blog. If a reader is reading your content and resonating with what you're putting out there and they and they feel like they believe your story and understand your company's mission or your brand's mission, you know, they are going to make the purchase without you having to need to directly ask for it. And so that leads into tip number 4, um which is post frequently and consistently. Um, it's important to establish a consistent blogging schedule because you can't establish that level of trust with your readers um, and be able to, to give an authentic story and better explain your why if you aren't regularly putting out or, or you know, putting out content for your readers to consume. So as the popular rule of seven marketing philosophy goes, a person needs to interact with your brand about seven times before making a purchase usually, you know, and who knows if it's seven, 14, any kind of number in between, whatever number it is, it is true that we all need to have more than one touch point usually with a company before we say, Hey, I want to buy that product. doesn't mean sometimes you just see an ad that really just speaks to you and you're ready to go buy. But generally you need to have that kind of interaction time with your customer before they're ready to buy. And so as I like to say constantly, you know, content marketing and blogging especially is an experience. And so you need to be thinking about the collective impact of your entire brand identity. So you can't expect to post once a month on a blog, 300 words, and see a world of a difference in your sales. Quite the opposite. Like all of content marketing, you really have to be invested in, in putting in the work. Um, in a long term and kind of consistent strategy. So I can guarantee that the more you post content on your blog, the more you are going to be able to offer to your audience and the more trust you will build with them. So there's a lot of ways to build trust, like I said, with your audience as a business. The blogging is definitely not the only one, but one of the best ways to get started if you don't already have a blog is to start a blog. Or if you do have a blog, Make sure you're not just casually posting, but actually being thoughtful about your posting schedule and the content that you are putting out there. With authentic, consistent, and relevant blog posts, you will grow your audience, increase traffic to your site, and most importantly, establish trust and credibility with your reader during a time when trust is really hard to come by. So go out there post some awesome content on your blog, whether you be a business, an entrepreneur, or just representing your own personal brand. Um, and I can guarantee you're going to get a lot more viewers, a lot more readership, the more you post and the, the better the quality or the better the value that you're offering with your posts. So good luck to you. Thank you for listening. And I look forward to seeing you on other videos on my channel. Have a great rest of your day.